Hello, my name is Ruth Meisner and I'm presenting Omelette. This is our optimization and machine learning toolkit. Omelette was developed in collaboration with researchers from Imperial College in London, Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, and Zandia National Laboratories in Albuquerque. Our project was led by Francesco Ciccone and Jordan Jalving, with the help of many of us other researchers. If you would like to join us and uh, have your picture together with all of our wonderful pictures, um, please join us on uh, GitHub. There's plenty of contributing to do uh, to the Omelette project. Uh, we're giving the website for our GitHub uh, page up in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so what is uh, the optimization and machine learning toolkit? Well, what it is, is it's something that takes uh, trained neural networks or trained gradient boosted trees. These are machine learning models that have already been trained and it transforms these already trained uh, machine learning models into Pyomo code. Pyomo is a algebraic modeling language that helps us represent optimization problems and then easily pass the optimization problems on to solvers. We're pretty serious about the software engineering in Omelette. Uh, so we do have quite a number of tests for uh, the Omelette code. Uh, we are passing these tests. The code coverage is 94%. And then we also have a nice uh, API documentation. Okay. So why might I like to represent uh, trained machine learning models as Pyomo formulations? Well, first off, uh, I might want to do optimization formulations that are thinking about adversarial examples, and I'll give a few examples of this on the next slide. I might also want to be investigating uh, maximizing a neural acquisition function in a machine learning context, or doing Bayesian optimization also in a machine learning context. In engineering, uh, machine learning models may replace complicated constraints or serve as surrogates in larger design and operations problems. Okay, so I mentioned these adversarial examples and it's worth sort of digging into these a bit more. Let's say that I have an already trained neural network. Uh, so my already trained neural network is going to classify MNIST digits. So it's going to take uh, these pictures here. I have a picture that my uh, trained neural network recognizes as a nine. And I'm going to ask myself about adversaries. An adversary is going to be something where it's somehow nearby uh, in this trained neural network, but maybe instead of recognizing the image as a nine, the adversary uh, will be uh, a four. And I want to know, is there somehow an image that predicts four that is very close to this image that predicts nine? Okay. So I can take some perturbation, for instance, in uh, the L1 space using an L1 uh, distance metric. I can take a perturbation of four. And if I was to take a perturbation of four in the L1 norm, then this image uh, shown here at the bottom, that is going to predict a four uh, using my already trained neural network. Or if I perturb by 0.05, using the L infinity norm, this image as well in the lower right hand corner is also going to be recognized by my trained neural network as a four. So what's happening here is that somehow my trained neural network might be a little bit too brittle uh, depending on the application. I might be able to trick my trained neural network um, by changing just a few of uh, the pixels and um, or changing the pixels by just a little bit and be predicting a four rather than a nine. Uh, so there's lots of optimization problems in artificial intelligence that are somehow related uh, to these ideas I just mentioned. Uh, the first is actually not an optimization problem. It's a feasibility problem, but often in the literature, it's uh, sort of written down uh, to be solved by an optimization solver because there are quite a number of very good optimization solvers. Uh, this is a verification problem. And what it asks is, is there an adversary labeled K? So is there a four within a given perturbation? So you set the distance metric, say an L1 norm or an L infinity norm, and you set the given perturbation. Um, so for instance, if I was to say, well, my perturbation is going to be five with an L1 norm, then yes, there would be an adversary labeled four in uh, that uh, given perturbation. But if I was going to take an L 
uh, infinity norm and say that my perturbation was 0 0.01, well then, no, there is not going to be an image that is recognized as a 4 within that perturbation. So that's a verification problem, basically the existence or not of an adversary. An optimal adversary would be within a given perturbation radius, what maximizes the prediction difference. So where are you quite sure um, that no, no, this really is a four. And then I might want to think about a minimally distorted adversary. Um, this would be the smallest perturbation over which the neural network is going to predict uh, that this is a four. I might also want to ask myself, can I safely remove neural network nodes or layers? So these are all challenges that can be written down as optimization problems. Maybe I want to write them down as optimization problems. Um, and then I also had mentioned a number of other applications in engineering um, and also in uh, machine learning. So generally, all of these types of problems that I've mentioned, what is the class of optimization problem uh, that I want to solve? Well, basically, the key word here is hybridize. I want to mix uh, different types of uh, constraints or possibly a different kind of objective with a different kind of constraint. Um, I want to mix, first I want to mix model-based optimization. So many people, and this is the field of mathematical programming or mathematical optimization, many people what they will do is they will solve an optimization problem. Here I have my objective function uh, subject to uh, constraints. And people will assume that they can write down these uh, constraints and the objective function. So for instance, um, if my objective function is to maximize profit, then what I'll do is I will basically take my uh, revenue uh, subtract my costs, and that will be my objective function. It's basically anything that goes into my revenue, I would like to increase. Anything that goes into my costs, I would like to be decreasing. This tends to be the kind of uh, formulation that I can write down. Um, if it's as easy as revenue minus costs, you might even have a linear function in the objective. Then there are other constraints that I can write down. Um, for instance, if I know that I'm only allowed to use a certain amount of a resource, I can write that down. But, um, and here's what is different about omelet, what I also want to do is I also want to be able to incorporate an already trained machine learning model into uh, the optimization problem. So for instance, we have our inputs uh, x into uh, an already trained machine learning problem, and we have our outputs y into an already, out of an already trained uh, machine learning uh, model. What I would like to do is have these inputs and these outputs basically uh, available to me as uh, variables in my optimization problem so that I can work with them uh, as much as I may wish. Now this is exactly what Omelette does. Omelette uses um, the Pyomo abstraction that's called a block. And basically what the Pyomo block abstraction allows you to do is hide, if you wish, um, all of the uh, constraints or all of the new variables that are introduced within a block. The reason that these Pyomo blocks are very useful uh, inside of Omelette is that we are particularly using um, an extension of the block abstraction that we call an Omelette block abstraction to hide uh, dense neural networks, convolutional neural networks, and gradient-boosted trees. So basically what happens is that the uh, constraints and the variables that represent dense neural networks, convolutional neural networks, and gradient-boosted trees are going to be hidden inside of this Pyomo block. Now I do keep saying hide, um, but this is open source software, so of course if you wish to go into the Pyomo block, you always may. Now, I'll mention this a bit more later, but one thing that we might want to keep uh, in mind is what are these expressions, uh, fi? So basically, these expressions that we can write down as part of our optimization problem, maybe they're affine. I mentioned something like revenue uh, minus cost. That might be an affine function. 
maybe these expressions are going to have uh, discrete variables. Maybe there's some sort of on off switch of if there's like a facility location. Yes, I want to locate that facility in that place. And then maybe there are uh, nonlinear expressions. So for instance, this might be um, if I needed to follow some physical law, um, if I needed to follow some law of thermodynamics, of reaction engineering, or of something else. Now, what we might need to keep in mind, and I'll mention this a bit more later, is that we will want our Pyomo block to have inside of it uh, functions that somehow match these expressions f. Um, so for instance, if there are discrete variables in uh, the functions that we're writing down, we may want to be using ReLU uh, neural network or gradient boosted tree surrogates. If we are using uh, nonlinear functions f, we may want smooth neural network activations. So we mentioned the problem that we want to solve, but we're going to need to be able to go from a higher order uh, neural network or gradient boosted tree representation in to omelet. The reason that this is a little bit annoying is that there are lots of different ways of developing uh, neural networks or gradient boosted trees using a lot of different software. So what omelet is going to use is it's going to use ONNX. ONNX is a code that represents many of these uh, different uh, ways of training neural networks. So basically the entire purpose of ONNX is interoperability. You can make uh, your neural network in PyTorch and I can make mine in TensorFlow and nobody cares because we can both get our neural network into ONNX. From ONNX, uh, we are able to read into Omelette. Omelette does also have a direct from Keras interface um, this interface is supporting neural networks only, not gradient boosted trees. And uh, if you're getting excited about Omelette, well, if you would like to join us, one of the many things we do need to do um, is that we do need another gradient boosted tree interface. Um, so for instance, light GBM. Uh, the problem with ONNX is it's not supporting categorical variables, uh, something like red, green, blue. Uh, ONNX is only going to uh, represent continuous uh, items like a wavelength of light or something like this. And the problem with this is that gradient boosted trees work really well uh, with categorical variables. Um, so that's one of our very many to do's. Find some of the others either on our GitHub uh, discussion forum or on our GitHub issue list. Okay. Now, most software that is out there evaluates a trained model. And I'm going to use the example of gradient boosted trees here. Here, evaluating a single tree is really super easy. So let's say I want to know what is the value of this tree for the point 4, 2. First, I ask myself up at the root node of this tree, um, is x1 less than 3 or is it greater than or equal to 3? Well, 4 is greater than or equal to 3, so I'm going to take the right branch. Then I get to another node, and it asks me to compare x2, which in this case is equal to 2, to 4. Now 2 is strictly less than 4, and so I'm going to take the left branch. Now I get to a node in the tree that asks me to compare x2 to 1, and we have that x2 is greater than or equal to 1, and so I'm going to take the right branch. So after all of that branching, I get to uh, the value of that leaf. The value of that leaf is x4 is equal to 0.4. That is the output of this one tree. Now what happens in gradient boosted trees is that you end up with an ensemble of these trees. And the gradient boosted tree uh, value is defined by uh, the summation of each of the leaf nodes that you end up hitting. So for each of the trees in the ensemble, I end up doing this uh, right, left, right, uh, for instance, in the first tree uh, set of rules, all by checking what is the value of the input, say, x, uh, with respect to the splits that I'm asked to take. I continue this procedure for each of the trees in the ensemble, and I get a value for each leaf um, in each tree, and then I sum up the active leaves, and I add a constant, and I get the output. 
So this is my output. I'm going to call it uh, Y because in Omelette we have been calling inputs to our uh, trained machine learning models X and outputs Y. But what if, and this is the Omelette setting, the trained gradient boosted tree is in an optimization problem and now the X or the inputs are decision variables. They're not fixed anymore. And there are mathematical programming formulations incorporating y is equal to gbt x um, with decision variables x into a larger optimization problem. This is a, uh, a solved item and people know how to do this. However, it can be annoying to program. And Omelette is going to automate the translation from this machine learning model to an optimization model. Continuing on uh, with the gradient boosted tree example, on the left hand side, I'm just illustrating one tree uh, or an example tree in a gradient boosted tree ensemble. On the right hand side, I'm showing the formulation. So what's happening here is that we have inputs uh, x. The inputs x are going to get translated into these new uh, sort of on-off variables w that say in which of these uh, little squares you end up in. And then there are also these variables z that are again uh, sort of turning on and off uh, leaves in individual trees. Okay. So basically what happens is that uh, these GBT formulations, they are introducing two new types of variables. They're introducing variables W and they're introducing variables Z. Um, and this is just sort of annoying to program. Um, so what Omelette is doing is that you can go and look into the Omelette block if you wish, but if you don't want to, all you have to do is basically take your uh, trained gradient boosted tree, um, use uh, omelet to say this is going to be part of my constraints, and then in your larger optimization problem, hook the inputs of the gradient boosted tree and the output of the gradient boosted tree to the other variables in your optimization problem. So if you're interested and you want to try more, uh, please check out our notebooks. This is a really good place to start with Omelette. Um, we're giving lots of examples of how we like to use Omelette. Uh, so for instance, there's this example of an autothermal reformer um, that was built uh, for the IDEAS uh, PSE framework. Uh, there's also examples that sort of show how to use Omelette. Um, uh, an example similar uh, to the MNIST example I gave at the beginning and a Bayesian optimization example. What is special about Omelette and what I'm so excited about is that we can automatically uh, translate a trained machine learning model, currently neural networks or gradient boosted trees, uh, into Pyomo optimization constraints. We have really nice interoperability via the ONNX interface, and we can easily switch and compare formulations. If you want to join our awesome team, please find us on GitHub. Uh, we're really looking forward to working with you.